And I'm doing a review on a 2018 Triton by Voltage. Uh, it's a 3351. Um, light, let's see, dry weight is like 11,300. Um, I don't remember what max payload is. I think it's about 17,000. Um, when I have it loaded, uh, I've been around 16,000, 16,500 for the way I use it. Uh, let's see, the trailer is like 37 and a half feet long. And the garage space, cargo space, I guess, because this is an open floor plan, is over 20 feet. Uh, one of the biggest reasons we got this was because of open floor plan. I prefer the open floor plan. I know some people complain that it stinks like fuel and machines, and it, it doesn't. I mean, if you were to spill fuel and oil, yeah, it probably would. But I've I've had carbureted old carbureted stuff in here. Um, I haven't had a problem yet. So I don't think that's just pay attention to what you're doing. Don't spill stuff. Turn your your fuel off and your carbureted stuff. You you'll be fine. It's not a big of a deal. And it's just more versatile. I mean, you could, you can store stuff in here. You could move with it. You can, you know, if we go uh, travel across the states, you know, to uh, Mississippi area from Idaho, and we we took a lot of stuff uh, with us on that on that trip while we worked down there for five months. So uh, it's nice to have the space. If we had a a separate garage which I think the biggest you can get is about a 15 or 16 foot I could be wrong but you don't have as much space uh, so this thing gives us a lot more space um, I've got an 18 uh, Polaris Razor four-seater turbo that I can get up in here it's a bit it's a bit tight you know it's about 65 inches wide tire you know outside tire tire and it it, it fits now this couch I do have to fold fold up this couch uh, will be in this configuration you can fold it clear up against the wall or of course it lays down to a bed um, so anyway you do have to uh, you do have to move that up to get the razor in but I can get the razor in uh, clear up here and I can still get two full-size four-wheelers uh, back here um, so this last trip that we took I had my wife's little, or my daughter's little four-wheeler sitting right up here. She's got a little uh, Suzuki LT80. Um, and we had a couple four-wheelers in here. And I had my dirt bike in the back. So we had quite a few stuff. Now, if we had the Razor in here, um, I think we'd, we'd only be limited to a couple four-wheelers. Um, uh, so I couldn't get it all in. Obviously, you can't fit everything in here. But um, there's quite a bit of room. In this trailer which is why we like it the other thing we liked is in an open floor plan it had like the you know the most counter space and more cabinet space that, that that we we found I mean there's lots of lots of cabinet space and storage in this in this unit um, you know counter space was a big one you you look around you're pretty limited on counter space on a lot of a lot of RVs and toy haulers especially open floor plan toy haulers so uh this was this was nice you know you got your two beds up there and of course this folds up to a table table goes there um I put another table here there is a single leg here where we can put a small table here for these chairs um these chairs are cheap fairly comfortable uh, pretty comfortable. They do recline a little bit and they've got a little um, thing here for your legs. Um, but they're 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 cheap. Uh, I don't know how long they'll last. And I've seen these exact seats, uh, chairs, and other trailers that don't have the V, so they're they're pretty widely used. Um, but anyway, uh, comfortable, just not built real well. As most everything in this trailer, uh, and, and most everything with any RVs. I mean, I've been in a lot of them, and they're just not built well. It's like there's no quality control. Uh, the employees don't seem to, you know, all seem, uh, at least in this trailer and some others I've been in, it seems like they were built on Friday, and people were rushing, trying to get out of there. Um, 
they don't have quality control and it's real aggravating i mean that's one of my biggest complaints with this trailer we've got i don't need this door seals up real well we get some dust that comes in, in the corner if you look at it just right you can see daylight that comes through this this seam here have to silicone that i guess um the fire extinguishers among you know these window these window fixtures and you know this thing here coming loose already you know things like that if they're not mounted to something solid they just come out over time and it doesn't take very long at all we haven't used this trailer hardly at all just barely got it last year and this fire extinguisher thing already started coming out of the wall so um, i took the fire extinguisher off of it because i didn't want that to finish coming out of the wall uh you know these little these little things they just got to be in something solid or they will give you problems um, these rails and here we got screws this is at this point and then all all the way down here there's no screws so it flops around now i'm hoping there's something structure i assume that there's a, a frame behind it and i just need to add some screws there to and that's it's that way on all four all four rails here but uh it's missing screws i don't know why they thought it wasn't necessary to put them in but um we will be doing that and this does have a a net pull pulls down here which we haven't used yet um and you'll see a lot of trailers with these doors a lot of toy haulers that have these doors as patios um pay attention because a, a lot of these doors um are not structurally strong enough for the patio we thought uh we looked at several did a research on several triton uh voltage trailers and we've seen a lot of them with patios but uh we later realized that this is not uh the quality of door that can handle the weight so it's it's not a patio so we don't we don't have that option on here uh again this trim i wish they would glue it you know staple it nail it and glue it but they don't and so this whole thing is coming out already this little thing is dragging on the floor loose and you can't really screw it obviously you can't get a drill under the back side um i guess our only option is to to maybe glue it hopefully so ah, just man the way they build these you know things uh these flaps you gotta pay attention and probably this this is the way on all these shares you gotta pay attention to the, the, the seal because what will happen is it it'll be stuck like that and then it doesn't seal right it lets dust through and and water if you get rained on and that sort of thing um if you're going to go wash it at like a blue beacon or somewhere make sure those seals are all sealed otherwise you'll get a bunch of water in here um so i think my fix is to put a bunch more of these down and maybe that'll help but as of right now i got to get up on a four-wheeler ladder with a hanger and i got to pull that flap down on the outside um, it doesn't seem to be as much of a problem in inside here but on the outside every time on both slides the bedroom slide and the slide i have a problem with those dumb uh seals not flipping out like they're supposed to a problem there uh windows are just cheap thin windows there's no quality in them at all uh surely if you get a more expensive trailer you'll probably get that but man i mean brand new this thing was already 60 or seventy thousand dollars so it it should have qualified for better insulation and better windows um about right back here this is where the table goes it gets cold there's not near enough insulation and it's a it's cold on your feet you know not too bad here it's pretty good here back there it's bad um then I'll, i'm on the subject i'll go up to this bedroom this bedroom also cold this is usually one of the warmest spots my buddy had a high dollar momentum and this was like the hottest uh, room in the trailer and it, this is the coldest room you know the floor is carpet on wood there's no you know i don't know what insulation there is probably very little there's no carpet pad um any on any of this so it's it's cold it's hard to walk on it's you know cheap cheap uh this this vent on the back side has only got a two inch hose going to it so there's not enough heat able to come out of it um and of course it doesn't open and close it'd be nice if if all the vents would uh were controlled and you could open and close it and adjust your heat that way but none of them do and i tried to get 
um, a vent would open and close here. Thinking like, well, my buddy had a problem with his room getting too warm, so I want to close it down a little bit. Well, then I find out um, that the opening and closing vents only come in a 4-inch that I found. And, of course, the hose coming to this is 2-inch, so it wouldn't hook up. Um, so that was a stupid thing, is only having uh, a 2-inch hose uh, vent uh, here. Not Does not put out enough heat. Uh, and... You know, there's a lot, of, like I said, there's a lot of storage, and, and I like the storage in this room. We've got we've got storage there and there and a clear across there, down there, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of storage, but uh, there might not have been another way to do it, but there's no window on the side, and that's kind of a problem. I wish there was a window on that side. Maybe even at least a skylight would be nice to let some light in. I mean, this is the only window right here. So yeah, they could put a window in, I suppose, but then you're going to lose some of your storage. So, I don't know. Uh, it really does seem like they could have done something. And I wish there would have been something. Uh, you know, we've got our TV mount here. Um, and, uh, of course, ours didn't come with a mount, just a sticker. So, you're just supposed to guess on where the, the support is. And I, I, I got lucky, but um, you might you might miss a few holes and make a few screw up before you find where the structure is there even with a stud finder it kind of goes off it seems like on everything or doesn't go off so kind of a screwed up deal but anyway uh, we have to put that on uh, the door sliding door and i like it uh it gives us more room we don't have doors you know in the way but and maybe it's not possible for this type of door but i wish that there was a some kind of a lock you know, a, some kind of a lock mechanism. I mean, when this, if this door is, sh is shut, nothing keeps it from moving. If you're off level a little bit or something, it it doesn't stay shut. And of course, if you got kids, you know, and they're trying to break in on you on, on particular moments, so that's not good either. So, um, be nice if this door had some sort of a latch lock type thing on there. Um, Oh, let's see what what other I'll show you some complaints outside, but I'm trying to get everything Covered in here. Uh, it's real windy out there. So I'll try to do as much in here as I can um, uh, Like like here here was where the uh, fire extinguisher was uh, Possibly this was it here But they moved it and the holes has already come out. So now I got holes stuck in the wall um, That's a problem you want out I'm going in um, and it's just, it's just typical with all the fixtures and stuff. If they don't get a, a surface, uh, they're going to eventually come out and she's not going to get it to hold. Um, that's what other issue. Okay. The TV was a crap TV, low, very low quality. Um, this DVD player radio is, uh, doesn't have Bluetooth. Uh, you have a USB, but if you plug in like your your iPod, you can't get sound through it. It appears to only be a charger. Look at the book. Uh, it's just, I maybe mean, it's not working. I don't know, it's just a crap unit. Um, doesn't, it's not Blu-ray, so it's ter terrible quality. And then it does not have HDMI cables. It has these, you know, coaxial cables. I mean, we're 2018 and you're putting, you know, this old, 1980s crap in here. So anyway, that's the only sound and video you have is is that through this um, Vision System and then the other issue is this mount this mount is not extended. So This is about as good as I can get it. So if you're sitting at this table eating hanging out and you want to see the TV well about half of it is half of it is cut off you know, a good quarter of it anyway. So, so you know, unless you're sitting right back here on this couch, you you can't see the, the, the TV. So in order to fix that from everything I've seen, I'm going to have to just buy a new mount. Well, that new mount's not going to fit in exact same holes. So now I'm I'm going to have to drill new holes and and I'll have some existing holes. And I don't know, it's just, just a stupid design that they put in here. Um very stupid definitely wasn't thought out enough uh, of course the tv was crap like I said so we've got a better better quality tv but now we need a better uh, head unit to go along with it 
Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, up, up here, you see some daylight that wasn't put together or cut right. It's a lot of, just a lot of sloppiness, uh, on some of the trim. Um, what else in here? Do you want to go with the faucet was, was crap. And you know, if you're using, if you're boondocking using your tank, you don't want a lot of water coming out. You fill up your gray water tank quick, but, um, when you're hooked up to water and you got sewer, well, then you want more of your home like pressure. And so I installed this system. Plus I wanted this detachable uh, head unit here. Um, so we installed that. Uh, the heater is fairly sufficient, uh, could be better, but it, it does. Okay. doesn't seem like it's come on every five minutes, but it, if it's cold, it definitely comes on probably every 20 or 30 minutes. So, uh, but that doesn't really affect the heater. That's just poor insulation in the trailer. Um, you know, the air conditioner units, there's one up there and we got one in our bedroom. They're pretty efficient. They seem to, they seem to cool fairly well. Uh, definitely could be better. They don't go above and beyond with with these units. Um, the generator will run both air conditioners. We've got an onboard uh, Cummins Owen generator, and it, it, it does good. And it's really nice to be able to turn that thing on from inside inside here and uh, do, your, do your thing, you know. And it's pretty quiet. You hear it, but it's not ob obnoxious. Um, so anyway, the other issue is this, this cabinet, these cabinets here were the only ones in the trailer to have shelving. You know, we had to put in that shelving and we had to put in that shelving, that shelving there. And then we left uh, these cabinets here with no shelving, but we had to put shelving uh, up here. So we added that. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, we uh, we like to use this trailer some of the time with these. It's nice to be able to just pull over, sleep in it. And this trailer is pretty functional with the slides in. Um, the only issue is that these drawers are a little bit hard to get to and the heater vents are kind of poorly positioned in my opinion so um you can't get real good heat i mean it's a little less efficient when the heater's being blocked and uh then you know as you probably already saw when i was up here you're you can't get to a lot of your stuff on this side with the slide in but uh you know it, it goes out pretty pretty good and then you can get to your stuff Um, let's see, it's got a bathroom here, size bathroom, skylight, which is nice, uh, a vent, and again, this vent was not adjustable, so I was able to find one adjustable and put on, and most time we leave this closed, because this bathroom will get hot. And again, no shelving, we haven't put anything in, but no shelving, uh, shelving there. And this is just a mirror. It doesn't doesn't open up. So, um, so anyway, uh, it's a good usable trailer, a good workable trailer. We like it set up. It's just uh, build quality, and you know cheap some cheap components. Um, but we do we do like the layouts. Uh, now outside, like I said, it's windy out there. I don't know how much you can hear. I'll try to talk about stuff. Um, I'm going to complain about the latches on the the doors outside. There is a finger latch and then a, a key latch. Well, if you don't get both those latches secured, they're prone to getting water through them and, and dust. So it's kind of a pain to have to use the key to get in and out of your doors. You know, it's rather than just use your fingers and open the latch and get in if you want them secured so they they seal up good then you you've got to 
both do both the finger latch as I'll show you out there and have the key with you to work. And that's kind of aggravating. Uh, I wish they'd have a better latching system for those compartment doors outside. Um, and let's see the tires. They were cheap uh, Westlake tire. They're made from China. I haven't seen any good luck or had good luck with cheap Chinese tires. So I wanted to try to lessen my chances of having a blowout. So I went and got some Goodyear Endurance. Uh, they're a 235-8016. They're an 87 mile an hour um, speed rating. They are a 10 ply in the sidewalls. When you compare them together, there's like no squish. They're a much heavier tire, much better built. You can you can seriously feel the difference. So I did that hoping that uh, with proper air pressure and such, you know, I won't have a blowout. Because when you have a blowout, it messes up everything. I mean, there's no real warning. It's just, uh, so I try to lessen my chances with those tires. Um, and I'll show you those out there. Then the fuel tank, the onboard fuel station. Uh, I think most of them are metal tanks. And in this day and age, a lot of your fuel has got ethanol in it. And if it sits for a few months, it will rust the tank. And so then you're going to get contaminated fuel, which happened to me. Um, I use ethanol. I'm able to get some ethanol uh, 91 octane premium fuel, which I use. But there was some fuel left over when I bought the trailers from fuel. So I'm sure it was non-ethanol. I'm sure it was ethanol and, and it was too much of it. So it rested my tank. So I'll have some more experience down the road with that. But I'm assuming um, with non-ethanol fuel, I won't have that problem. But be aware that it's a metal tank. And if you leave, um, you know, ethanol fuel in there too long, it, you're you're going to have a rust issue. And we had had to dump out about 10 gallons of fuel um, to try to flush it out. So um, anyway, there's that. And well, I hope I'm not missing anything i think i talked about those seals um so i guess most everything is outside so i will go out there and try to kind of show you what's out there and uh we'll see how that goes with this crazy wind so turn this light off here okay so here's the latches i was talking about Make sure that you fold that awning in because if the wind comes up uh, it'll bend them so don't leave them down if it's windy uh, so here's, here's these tires here's your endurance tires um, here's a spring setup not very beefy and impressive for uh, this trailer i've got uh, company I work for has got some a uh, lot of enclosed trailers like 12 foot 14 foot uh, and they use about the same size brackets and such that this trailer uses so should be for a trailer that's heavy it should be much heavier components in the suspension um, this is really cheesy this wasn't mounted good so I had to fix this to secure that screws already coming out so I put some sil I took these all off put some black silicone around here to screw everything back down didn't get these the hole drilled big enough for these lights so these lights I don't know if you can see it there's a crack it's they're not in all the way um, you have to drill out that hole and I haven't done that yet this molding is already starting to come loose the screws coming out you're gonna have to 
fix that. Man, there's so much repairs. Ridiculous. Uh, this this thing's flopping around. The way they mount this, it puts the plate low. The wind messes with it, and if you drag, you know, a little bit, then it catches. Done that a couple times. Again, same thing with this side. This is not flush. These door latches, you know, they they work pretty nice, I guess. But again, I I wish they you could adjust them and they tighten down a little bit because door seals up real well your fuel station now on these these are threaded these these lock mechanisms are threaded be careful to not if you get these threads on threaded on there correctly you're, you'll strip it They're, it's plastic it's stupid plastic units very prone to stripping so you got to be careful with that Again, lock, so that's not secured unless you have the key. Okay, get out of the wind a little bit. Here's your storage. Uh, I don't know, maybe I just complain too much, but this, this is just aggravating. The plumbing is a mess. Uh, you've lost a lot of storage here, you know, because of the way they, they could have shortened those up. They could have done so much stuff, and they've got a lot of stuff in the way here. Uh, this this wall here is flimsy. It's made with cheap, thin wood. I've already had these screws. Well, like this one right here is is out. Nothing nothing to screw to because after flop around and we haven't had this trailer but a year, and I've only taken it out a couple times. We've lived in it for a while, but that wasn't pulling it through the hills and and doing a lot of traveling with it. So it's just this wood. You know this wood is just losing uh, its structure, and so the screws come out eventually, and uh, it's on it's happening on both sides of this dumb thing. And of course, it's very difficult with this plumbing here. It is very difficult to get this this out and get to all your plumbing, your 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 heater, and all your electronics, and your I mean all that. I don't know what you can see, but all all that. Uh, it's a real pain to get to with this, and and your this is this is your valve to winterize it, which is also a pain to get to. And uh, I don't even know if that would work the way it is. I think I would have to pull this paneling off to get to some other stuff in there to turn some other valves off for the, behind the hot water heater. But definitely a pain, uh, a mess. And I complained about the bedroom heater hose, and there it is, only two inches. Doesn't provide enough heat up there. Um, now some traders on the higher end ones you've got like sometimes it's on the outside and sometimes it's right inside here where you have all your controls like all your your valves and your on and off switches and your your winterization and all that stuff is like in one area which is very convenient uh, very good setup and I wish this had it and I wish all these manufacturers would would do that sort of thing instead of scattering everything all over the place and just making you know a big mess uh, I mean, it wouldn't have been that that big of a deal to do that, but I guess that's more than we can expect for, you know, $60,000. So, uh, anyway, this is the storage. These are uh, one inch wide doors, so that's good, but not that they seal up real well. And again, you have to have the key along with the other latch latched to get them to, to latch good. Propane tank has them. Um, so there's your propane tank right there. Nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, and here's your generator. I gotta change the oil, so I've got that side off. And your batteries. And I've put some uh, some hooks to hold my hoses and my extension cords. Now, one big problem where I'm up here is this, this is a heavy trailer. Not as heavy as they get, but heavy. I should have two motors on this jack system. I've only got one and it works hard and it's slow. It's very, very slow. It'll drive you crazy. Um, up and down, it's a real problem. 
So I'll probably end up having to install another motor that will hopefully speed things up and maybe uh, not cause so much stress on the single motor. Uh, eventually, I think that motor will go out. It's working so hard. So uh, anyway, issue there. Um, you know, nothing, nothing fancy here. I'm using the Anderson Ultimate Hitch. It works good. You know, I've got a gooseneck ball in my truck, and I don't, I don't want to put a fifth wheel uh, system in there. So this works good. It, it's stable. Um, if the trailer rocks around and moves around, the truck doesn't feel it. It's a good system. Now, uh, Limpard, which is the, the frame manufacturer for this trailer, they don't warranty if you have frame problems. They won't warranty if you have one of these hitches. But supposedly, um, Anderson will warranty uh, if they don't. I've used this uh, on a couple different trailers. I've seen them used. They seem to work good. Um, I'm sure in the right situation, if you have an accident, have to hit your brakes. If everything goes wrong, you may bend them. You know, I I can't say that they're the perfect setup, but um, that's what I'm using, and I've had good luck with it so far. And it's it's easy to hook hip, hook up to. It's when I want the my bed space back, it's easy to pull that that aluminum piece out. So anyway, uh, just to kind of show you, I guess, under here, better. Okay, here's your exhaust for your generator. Um, makes it quiet. And, uh, you know, you kind of want this exhaust away from your trailer. I see why they've got it sticking out so far, but uh, it catches, so you've got to watch. It's, it's very prone to catching on stuff. Your dump, your black and gray tank is there. Down there, and then, then I guess two two water tanks for fresh water. Um, haven't quite really figured all that out, but anyway, that's that's what that is. Um, I don't I don't exactly remember how much water this thing this thing holds. Um, I guess I need to look. There's there's different numbers. I've seen different numbers read different numbers but it holds quite a bit we we haven't run out our biggest problem is filling up the gray water uh, the tanks for the gray and black water are small um, but you know the black tank is really an issue but the gray water fills up fills up fast um, so you got to be very conservative uh, when with that but anyway i think that's about it i did notice a, a stinking screw that has come out here i mean cannot stand the amount of money we spend for these things and the quality is just crap total 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 crap you know and i've seen guys spend near a hundred thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars on 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 momentums and and higher quality trailers that have some of these issues so it's just uh it's just it's ridiculous so anyway uh here's some Here's some weight weight specs that you can read. Like I said, this trailer empty weighs like 11. If I can get it to show up, weighs like 11,300 pounds. Um, you can put uh, 5,400 pounds of cargo weight in there, so you know it can haul quite a bit. So anyway, uh, I think that about about covers. I hope I've been helpful. I'm sure the video is long. Um, I'm not the best at doing these things, but I've had some people ask me about this trailer and what I thought of it and kind of the uh, way it was set up. And so I'm finally getting around to doing that. So anyway, if you have any questions, you know, I'll try to get answer those. And uh, again, hopefully you guys uh, got the information you wanted and helps you out in your, your buying decisions and that sort of thing. So have a good day.